Hi everybody, my name is Renee. I am from the Town of Exeter Energy Committee. We are here today, Amy Farnham and I, of the Energy Committee. We're coming to you live from Planet Playground because the next generation is going to need some clean air. So we'd like to educate you on electric cars today. We do this every year and usually we do it out in front of the town hall. But this year, because of social distancing and things like that, we're just going to shoot a video and educate you on cars this way. I'm going to tell you a little bit about electric vehicles. Amy's going to tell you a little bit about chargers. And then we're going to cut to a pre-recorded segment where a local person in town is going to show you his car. So you may be wondering, where can I get an electric car? Any of the dealerships in Exeter have electric cars. There are about 40 electric cars on the market right now. You can go see Bill Bradley over at the Honda Barn. He can talk to you about the Clarity. If you'd rather a Ford or a Hyundai, you can go see Jay McFarland over in Hampton. They have some nice Konas in that you can test drive. Uh, also, the Volvo dealership in town has a lot of used electric cars if you're interested. And another thing you can do if you just want to sit at your computer and check it out is go to a website called Carvana. It's like Nirvana, Carvana with a V. You can go there and you can virtually get inside any electric vehicle. You just go to the website, you, t you type in electric vehicles and it will show you all the electric vehicles around here, hybrids and pure electrics. So I'm going to stop chatting now and I'm going to pass it over to Amy. She's going to tell you a little bit about electric cars. Hi, thanks Renee. So I wanted to show off my car first. This is obviously a car owned by my company, Revision Energy. So as you can see, it's powered by sunshine. So this puppy runs on solar. Uh, it's a Chevy Bolt. And we'll get into a little bit more of the details later. But I just wanted to kind of show that off because it sort of segues into the charging. Um, so we charge this at our workplace that has solar panels covering the building. So it literally is powered by sunshine. Um, so chargers, when you're looking at certain cars, um, you're, you're looking at how quickly do I want to charge this car? How quickly do I need to charge it? You'll start hearing the terms level one chargers, two chargers, and three, or superchargers. So level one, I'll break it down. Level one is basically plugging a car into an outlet. It's the same thing um, you get with cars like this with electric vehicles you're going to get a charger um, a little plug essentially it's like a dryer plug looking thing and you can plug it into your garage and that's trickle charging level one so slowest out there um, can be anywhere between 20 to 50 hours to charge that way um, this car in particular, it takes 50 hours, 5 two days to charge this car up to its full battery capacity. So that's one way to do it. If you've got time, that's great. That's probably the easiest route. Uh, most people go with a level two charger, which is something like this. This is a Clipper Creek level two charger. And this gets um, installed on the wall of your garage or it can be outside as well but needs to be installed by an electrician. So this will basically take that charge time and cut it in half. So you could do, you know, uh, anywhere between probably 12, I would say even less, maybe five to 12 hours to charge a car on this level two charger. So finally a level three charger or a DC fast charger or supercharger um, can be, can charge your battery in just an hour or so. Um, it's quite expensive to do. Not every car has that capability um, and certainly needs to be professionally installed. So if you're looking for a way to help out, if solar or some other form of clean energy is out of your budget, this is a nice, easy way to contribute to the reduction of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If you own a business, that's an easy way for you to do something as well. You put up some chargers, you help to empower your employees to get electric vehicles, and you've done a big part to help out. So, nice, easy ways to All right. do your part.
Thank you, Amy. Yeah. I mean, and it's great. As you see all the cuties walking through the parking lot here and their baby carriages and whatever, and toddlers heading out to the playground, you know, you really feel like you're doing your part to help out the next generation. I have a grandson, and, you know, when he asked me what did I do, I'll tell him, I stood here today in this parking lot, and I tried to convince you to buy an electric car. So that being said, we're going to stop for a minute here, and we're going to show you a clip of a man who just loves his car. Hello, here we are with Al Lambert, formerly of Al's Auto, now of New England Truck Center, up on Epping Road. Many of you may know Al from around town for decades. His shop was right downtown where the Bungalow Club is now. So Al gets a new car every few years, because that's the kind of guy he is. And this year, he decided to get a nice Tesla, one of the very fancy ones, too. And we're over here with Al, and he's going to show us his Tesla and tell us about his ownership experience. So Al? What, what have you got to say here? Well, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta hold on. it was a unique buying experience. Uh, Renee got me thinking about Teslas two years ago, and I kept investigating them. And finally, I made the phone call for a test ride in Boston. And for $100, I was able to order the car online. And after that, you don't go into Boston. You don't have to go for service. Everything's done at home, online. Uh, it's really easy. They follow up the whole time and they deliver the car to your house in some cases or you can make arrangements to pick them up. Uh, it depends on where you live and the state laws for buying cars. But that being said, they're fantastic. They handle great. The S model that we have here is uh, much... There go the doors open. I got too close. The handlebars just moved right out. Yeah. And watch the windows when they close the door they actually go up a quarter of an inch it has a HEPA filter you're safer in that car than we are standing out here what are you talking about safer <laughs> but uh, it's got everything you can want in a car it's self-driving it's self-parking uh, it avoids crashes it warns you ahead of time it will stop it stays in the lane uh, the suspension changes height depending on your speed uh, if you want to be in sports mode all the time, it'll drop down. Sports mode? Low yeah. riders? Low rider, basically. Okay. And it'll get up to about nine and a half inches off the ground. It varies up and down depending on speed. And you can set all that the way you like it or put it on automatic. Everything has two, a couple of choices. And usually the last one is automatic and the car does it for you. Okay. Yeah, the car's always connected by GPS wherever you go and you you look on your phone there's an app you can find your car you can start your car you can move your car without being in it oh my gosh it is self-driving to some extent on private property so it's possible to move this car across the parking lot oh well but, maybe we'll have you demonstrate yeah, that that's a have to warm it up though there's a sequence for the computer i usually leave oh. it off oh, okay. and it will park itself it's a little scary yeah. Let it park itself when you're sitting in it, but it will do parallel parking without a problem. Well, you know, maybe some people would prefer that, because I know a lot of people really hate parallel parking, so maybe <laughs> oh, they'd take I know. a better choice. And it's got a lot of storage space. Uh, there's a front trunk, which is a, a well, because there's no engine, and the whole rear is a trunk. Uh, mm. you, when you open it up, you'll see the back seats end right here, and it's all open, these seats drop down. And underneath is another well for storage. The base of the car, say from here down, underneath, that's one big battery uh, compartment yeah. with the Tesla batteries. In the, and that's what runs the whole car. Electric motors, no gas. Uh, if we want to turn the heat on now, I can turn the heat on. I can turn the air conditioning on. All from your keychain? From my keys, or or I can Do you tell have your it. keys on you? Yeah. Well, Actually, it's from the phone. Oh, from the phone. Okay. The phone has an app. Your phone is your key. And oh. I have a, a pod. Okay. It's a little Tesla. It's a and, tiny, te it's like a matchbox. Oh my God, that's adorable. And it will unlock the doors and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, uh, sometimes it works real good. It goes the back door. Okay. Oh, look. These guys' golf clubs in there. Yep, after the golf clubs. I can get four sets of golf clubs in the back and four people in the car. All right. I've so tried why don't you it. tell us about maintenance on the car? Uh, 
almost zero maintenance. The biggest thing you might have to do is the computers, and they, they do downloads at night when it's plugged in and update the car all the time based so on... you don't bring it anywhere? It just uh, happens over the internet? Or? Over the internet. If you have a problem, say, a bad tire. Bad tire, okay. Windshield wipers. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the air conditioning yeah. isn't working right. Uh, then you'd go in for maintenance, but there really isn't any maintenance. And to where speak would of. you go? Uh, some of it's done at home. You just get on the computer in the car or on your, on your phone and you ask for an appointment. Yeah and they get back to you and if it's something they can do with their mobile service they do it at the house they well, come to your house yeah wow house and calls. the closest place from here is in peabody peabody uh, down on 114 uh it's, it's 32 miles mm -hmm. so if i have to go down there uh, depending on the service i could get a loaner car or just wait mm -hmm. and Mostly everything is computerized. Right. So, but typically you don't have to do that because everything you do. At no, home. if there's a major problem, there's a warranty. It's three, five years, and the battery's eight. So, if I had a problem, I could call up right now, and they'll come tow the car down to Peabody. Mm -hmm. If there's something that they can't fix on the road. Okay. Uh, the biggest thing is you never let the battery go completely dead. Oh there's, yeah. There's no reason because that. That, and then it has to go to the dealer because it, All right. it doesn't restart if it goes completely dead. And it dead. probably gives you a lot of warnings. It does. Yeah, it it'll beg it you. It nags you and begs you to, to charge me. Yeah, and it'll even drive you to a charging station. Drive you. <laughs> it'll, That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's like your best friend. All this right. This car is ridiculously fast. You have to be really careful because it's too easy to speed. You have no idea that you're doing 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. Oh my God, do you hear that? Exeter Police Department, 80, That's 90, right. 100 miles oh, an hour. Oh, I'm really careful, it would be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. No, it's extremely fast. Uh, there's nothing on the road that's gonna touch it. Oh gosh. So yeah. Al's in love with his car, I oh, am yeah. too. This well, is a I beauty. Well, I hope to keep this for maybe uh, six, seven years. Six, seven years, and usually you trade in every two? Two, yeah. Yeah. It's a, the battery has an eight-year warranty, and mm -hmm. depending on what happens, I'll keep it for a while. And yeah. they have a high resale right now. Tesla's uh, trade-in is really yeah. high. You get most of your money back. How long have you had this car now? Uh, it got delivered the beginning of March, and it sat in the garage <laughs> March, April, May. Mm -hmm. So I, I yeah. did get it right at the beginning of March. I got it just before they shut down operations in California. Oh, because this of came the from pandemic. California. Yeah. And then we didn't drive really. And I, on one thing, I had to install a charging station at my house, and that mm -hmm. wasn't too bad. I had a professional electrician put it in. It's basically like a dryer outlet. And but I bought the Tesla. Fast. Is it? It's about this big. Uh huh. And it just goes in the wall, and they run the wires to it, and that's all so Wi-Fi enabled. And how long does it take to charge the car? Overnight? It, yeah, during the night time, a couple hours maybe. It depends on how far it is. Yeah. If you're on the highway and you stop at a charging station, it might be only 30 minutes mm -hmm. or 45. But at home, it's a, a lower rate. You're yeah. not going to get a. You get 150 amps at some of the outside stations, like Tesla, mm -hmm. the uh, high output ones. Supercharges, they call them. Right, the supercharges. At home, it's more normal. And if you were in a real jam and you try to charge it off house current, you could spend days. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I have an adapter kit <clears throat> somewhere buried in here mm -hmm. for different uh, adapters for yeah. an off brand charging station, we'll call it. It's not a Tesla. Right. I have adapters. And I could adapt to house current, but that's yeah. not, not I mean, a good what thing. What I do with mine is I just go home at night I plug it in in the morning it's ready to go yeah. you know on a slow charge and this one tells you if you you want to know you just look at your app and it'll tell you where the car is in the charging rate mm -hmm. it tells you as you're driving how much you're using in it if you put a trip in it will give you an estimate of usage to get to where you're going and to come back oh, how much will be left so high tech. And if you have to stop and get charged, it'll it, recommend the charging station. Tell you where the charging stations are on the way? All the time. All right. Well, that's one thing we're trying to do on the Exeter Energy Committee is we're trying to get a fast charger in town. 
uh, so that we can get on these apps and people will come into town, charge their car, grab a coffee, grab a lunch. We're still working on that, maybe someday. It's advantageous to uh, like a bed and breakfast? Yeah. Or the, I think the, the, exit, can... the inn at the bandstand has one. Yeah, they, yeah. I saw that. I wasn't sure it was in effect. I read that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, there, it's but on it's only... the app when you look for charging. Yeah. But it's for their customers. Right. It's only for their customers. So it's but, like the public station that we're lacking in Exeter. Yeah, yeah. But I think we'll get it someday, shortly. It would be nice. Yeah. I could park there and charge it up. Yeah. I while don't. You're getting your coffee. I, <laughs> I know Al from the coffee shop. Yeah. We're hanging out at St. Anthony's. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> we got to put one out back there. That's the place. Yeah, that's right at Anthony's. <laughs> and the Academy property. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so yeah, much, Al, welcome. for talking to us oh, today, great. showing us your beauty. We appreciate yeah, it. It's your fault. I know. I she talked got him me, into it down at the coffee shop. She got shop. the bug in my ear at the coffee shop, and then I committed to it. Yeah, he it took committed. two years. So thank you, thank, thank you. you. On thank behalf you. of my grandchildren and everything, I thank you and I salute you. Thanks, Al. Welcome back. Al really loves his car, right? So I wanted to talk to you about the stats. How many cars there are in Exeter? There are electric cars and there are hybrid cars. Now I've got this report from the town clerk's office. So for this year, we have 44 fully electric vehicles registered in the town of Exeter. The most popular of that being the Tesla. We have 20 Teslas of various varieties. And then we have some Leafs and some Bolts and a bunch of other ones. And as far as the hybrid ones, we have 311. And of that, the number one car obviously is the Prius. In New Hampshire, we have the fourth largest amount of electric vehicles in the country. California is number one. 5% of their vehicles are either electric or hybrids. And in New Hampshire, we're not too far behind. We have almost 4% of our vehicles are electric and hybrids. So thank you, New Hampshire residents. All right, so one last thing about electric vehicles. Your friends may say to you, well, charging an EV still burns fossil fuels, so in essence, it's a net zero. You're really still polluting. Well, you know, that could be true if you live in a state whose energy mix is mostly coal or some other bad mix, but ours is not, actually. I'll show you this chart. Bob, can you zoom in on this chart? <clears throat> As you can see, in 2020, the New Hampshire energy mix is 67% nuclear, 10% hydro, 12% natural gas, and 11% renewables like solar, wind, and biomass. Solar and wind are both growing fast. There is a federal task force now studying an offshore wind farm, 25 miles offshore, which could power half the state. So that brown slice of the pie chart is poised to explode in a very clean way. Running a traditional car on gasoline is also highly inefficient. At best, only 30% of what you burn powers the engine, and the rest gets lost in heat and emissions. This reminds me of the old school light bulbs that were so hot to, to the touch. They really wasted a lot, and now everybody's using the cool LEDs, and they last longer, and they use way less energy. The evolution of EVs are following a similar path. So to wrap it up, let's talk about toxic tailpipe emissions. They're spewing into the air. Now you would not go into your garage and close it and turn your car on. Everybody knows you're not going to do that. You get a little wilted. So why would you want to spew that all into the air and have the whole planet get a little wilted? We've got our kids playing out here at the playground and they do not deserve to be wilted. So. Humbly, the Exeter Energy Committee asks you to consider your next purchase of a vehicle to be an electric vehicle for the sake of the next generation. Thank you.